Hey, I'm David. This is week 37 of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. Typically, we get in a vehicle and we attend a new church each week. But this week, no, this week we're going to church in the metaverse. So check this out. About a year ago, Mark Zuckerberg made this big announcement, rebranding the Facebook umbrella as Meta, while placing heavy emphasis on the future of the Metaverse and their Oculus, now MetaQuest 2 headset. And at the time, I think a lot of people were skeptical about it, but also there was this pinch of curiosity with Zuckerberg's stamp of approval. So I did a video at that time talking about church in the Metaverse, if this could be a tool, if this could be a fresh mission field, because historically, when you look at advancements in communication, Christianity and religion has been at the forefront. So with stone tablets, you had the Ten Commandments. With books and scrolls, you have the Torah, you have the Bible. When you had the invention of the printing press, the first thing that went viral was Martin Luther's 95 Theses to launch the Protestant Reformation. Even with the invention of radio and TV, some of the very first broadcasts were church services, were sermons. But then came along video games, and computers, and the internet, and really Christianity was kind of behind on that. And as a result, what we've seen in the last 20 years is church attendance has dipped like crazy. So with the metaverse, it really kind of got you thinking, is this going to be something where it's just a fad? Is this overhyped? Is this nothing? Or should this be something where we plant churches? Is this going to be something where we should invest time and invest resources into especially if Zuckerberg is the one that's making such a big push for it. One thing that I didn't know is the metaverse has actually been around for just under a decade. And one of the very first church plants was VR Church. So if you do a YouTube search on them, uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, you have some Christian media outlets who look at it in more of a curiosity factor, but then you also have some Christian influencers where it's almost like they're on this witch hunt for false teachers trying to find an expose, especially with VR Church in the past, holding a virtual baptism. So I'm not, I'm not really on board with that myself, but at the same time, are you missing the bigger picture? Is this a tool that we can use to preach ministry, to preach Jesus Christ to a different type of uh, demographic that typical churches just can't reach out to? So for this Sunday, I'll be attending VR Church in the Metaverse. Um, I got the Oculus headset I'm borrowing. Uh, I've been having issues with this, so I learned that you can also attend using a laptop. So I'm gonna try and play around with that. Uh, but gonna attend the service, and I'll have a few takeaways in just a moment. So first reaction to the metaverse, uh, I didn't come away very impressed. Uh, I think it's just due to the graphics in its current state. So whereas most video games you have these amazing uh, renders and on PlayStation 5, the graphics here were much more like PlayStation 2. Like it's just not there yet. But at the same time, after attending VR Church, I see a huge opportunity and I kind of narrowed it down to three big reasons 
why I think it's worth looking into. So number one, uh, they had expository preaching with world builders. Each week, the entire world setting is different and you almost go on this expository journey with the pastor. And you have all these different scriptures, verse by verse by verse, taking you through this world. So you can kind of get a little bit more of an interactive glimpse in terms of what it was like. Now again, the graphics just aren't there quite yet, but the framework is exactly how the metaverse and church would work really, really well together. Uh, the second thing I came away with is this is a great alternative for those that have handicaps or disabilities or social anxieties. So I talked with a few people afterwards and I was shocked at the amount of um, opportunities that this type of virtual church will give to those who don't want to go to church in a wheelchair, go through all the hassle and all the uh, disability accessible type of things you need to do. So it was a much more comfortable feeling for many people there. And the third big thing I came away with is my, the first service I went to, uh, there were two Muslims there and they were very curious about Christianity. So they didn't feel particularly comfortable just walking into a physical church, but with VR church, this was an opportunity where they could just kind of take a look around and just see what Christianity was all about. So I had issues trying to get this to work, so I had to use the laptop and they had a website called uh, Alt Space VR where you could create your avatar. So I kind of dressed them like I am right now. And then you have to find uh, the church service that you want to attend. So it's almost kind of like a Netflix menu where you have to kind of click and choose wherever you want to go. So before VR Church, I checked and browsed a few other virtual churches and they weren't, they didn't wow me, let's put it that way. Uh, you could tell they're just kind of getting their foot in the water. And a lot of the campuses were just very generic. Uh, they were just playing sermon streams and you could just walk around, but there wasn't any real justification for why you needed a virtual auditorium. So when I clicked on VR Church, I spawned to this wintry mountain landscape and uh, made my way down this little tunnel. And uh, they had this big screen promoting the gospel of Mark. So an assistant pastor, she shared a few announcements and then they played one worship song, which was only about three minutes. You can't really do worship in the metaverse the way it is right now, so you just watch this. And uh, the, the pastor got up, he was from Germany, and he kind of opened up the sermon. But with this, they are promoting this expository preaching with the world builders. So he invited everyone to come towards this almost like green button that you're supposed to click on to continue their expository sermon on Mark 6, the second part. So we teleport to this other part of the world and there's all types of scriptures writings up on the, like, I don't know what to call it, it's just up there. And the pastor would call on volunteers to read the scripture. So you had to pay attention because this was interactive, you had to keep moving. And it would just follow the story of Mark 6 as best as they could bring in a virtual setting. So with Mark 6 at the end of it, it's, it talks often about uh, where Jesus, like they're trying to get away from crowds, they're trying to get on boats and get away, but then there's a point where Jesus is greeted just by hundreds of people and Jesus kind of feels like, you know, they're like sheep without a shepherd, so it really touched his heart. So this is a story where Jesus feeds the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fish. So what they had is they had, uh, you could grab these fish and bread, and like at one point, like one of the pastors was just throwing them around uh, towards anybody. And the further that you got down, then they also had uh, baskets of the bread and the fish too. So eventually, and this is where I, I found interesting, is we went into the story of Jesus walking on water. So we had to click on this little button again, and we were teleported to this ship with this huge storm going all over the place. And it was really interesting just to see this and because in other type of videos I've mentioned, you know, uh, with Jesus, like when he's in our boat, when we're going through our own storms in life, like we have nothing to fear. Like Jesus is right there with us. If Jesus is inside our own boat, inside ourselves, uh, we have nothing to fear. Everything can be calm. So to see that was kind of interesting. And this was the biggest part where I feel like 
church in the metaverse, this is really where they can hone in on. So we finished up the sermon. Uh, afterwards, the pastor had a quick Q&A and a Muslim man uh, wanted to know more about Christianity. So he had a lot of questions and one of the big confusion type of items he had was, I can't understand your Christian view of the Trinity. Why would God the Father allow his God the Son version to perish at the cross? He didn't understand that. So the pastor kind of, uh, I don't think he did it the best way, but he, uh, he tried to answer his questions to kind of bring him into more of a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, afterwards with the service, I started talking with a gentleman. And here's where I learned where w there can be a lot of disabilities for people that go to these virtual churches. He was a caretaker and his wife suffered a major car accident. And he can't really get away. Like he needs to be there for his wife. You could do online sermons, but you don't get that sense of community. VR Church was a community for him that he was really finding an appreciation for. And I also talked to a gentleman, I had bumped into him earlier, he also was from Pakistan, he was Muslim, and he didn't really understand the whole gist of Christianity, but he was looking into it, he wanted to understand more. And I think one of his questions was, you know, why are you a Christian? And I kind of shared my story about, uh, you know, hey, we were just in this boat with this big storm. Here's where the relationship of, with Jesus Christ can really impact our own personal lives. It's more about relationship. And I think he had an aha moment. I could talk about my faith to somebody that doesn't understand Christianity. And that's where I'm afterwards, I was just kind of like, hmm, there could be something more here. Should the metaverse be something that we invest a lot of time and resources into? It's got me wondering. Uh, shortly after my visit, a day or two later, um, I learned that Microsoft had laid off um, their virtual reality and augmented reality departments. And they were shutting down their Altspace VR, the very same program that I used to be able to attend this. So, that, so with Microsoft out of the game, and I guess they're gonna be more focused towards business metaverse aspects, it makes you wonder if the big dogs of Zuckerberg and Microsoft, if they pull the plug on this, if this will still be a viable option. But I think with the metaverse and with VR Church, with what they did with this expository type of adventure, like this could really be something to help out when it comes to preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Instead of hearing the words, you could live the words. You could go through scripture as opposed to reading it or just listening to it. So I think there's a lot, like, there's a lot of seeds with this. I don't know if the sustainability is gonna be there right now, but with the future, with virtual reality, with augmented reality, whatever that turns into, I think VR Church is doing exactly what you need to do with this. And it just got me much, much more curious about what can happen from that in the future. That's gonna wrap up week 37 of 52 churches in 52 weeks. For next week, I uh, made a visit to attend a Messianic Jewish congregation. So, wasn't quite what I was expecting. So I'll share more on that next week. If you like the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Always appreciate that. But until next time, hope you have a good one.